In this Premiere Pro tutorial, I'm going to teach you how to create this simple and clean text title intro. So to begin, I just have a clip on the timeline, and I'm going to grab my type or text tool, and make sure you're in the program window up here, and you can click and begin to write out your text. I could just write in whatever I want, and you'll see that has created a new graphic layer wherever your timeline was. So don't worry, you can always move this wherever you want, and you can make it as long or short as you want, past what it is by default. So what we want to do next is open the Essential Graphics panel on the right-hand side. If you don't see that, just go to Window, and you can open up the Essential Graphics panel. And here you see that text layer we created that says Music Video Title. So the first thing we're going to do is choose the font that we want. So I like to just keep it really simple and clean with a solid all-cap style. For this one, I'll just use Arial Black, just a nice bold and big text. And there's a few ways you can align and adjust the text. So I'm going to increase the scale. I want it to sort of fill the whole screen. And if you want to bring it back to center, you can click on these Align Horizontally and Align Vertically buttons. So that fills the whole screen. So right now, this width's like at zero but I can even make it squished in for a more, you know, modern look. You can even space it out if you want for that sort of look. This is where this, you can add your own style to it. So I'm gonna sort of tighten it in, center it, and you can also adjust other things, such as the proportion and the scale. So right now, it's linked to scale proportionally, but if I uncheck this chain or link button, I can make it, you know, wider than it is tall or taller than it is wide. That's an interesting sort of graphic design, stylistic choice. And then you can just adjust the size of the font if you want to keep the proportion instead. So, you know, here we have a little bit more wide. Feel and look. And that's why a simple clean font like Arial works. You can even try Futura or Helvetica and play around with the different font families. So this is Arial Black. But if you're just in regular Arial, you have options for bold or bold italic. You have different ideas here. The font choice is really what's going to make or break the title since it's, it is very clean and stripped back. Now the next thing I'm going to do is add a little subtitle text. So there's a lot of ways you can do that. You can right click and duplicate on whatever the first thing you've created was and move it down and then. Adjust the size of the font rather than the scale to get sort of a proportional thing and then just change what it says so now you have the same thing so if you highlight both of these layers together by holding shift and clicking them you can adjust multiple things about them like if you wanted to change both of the layers color with different color or whatever something's white works yellow works. Both of those are cool also, if you're working with a clip that is very bright and you're using white text, you know, it might be hard to read some things if it is a very bright shot. In that case, you can consider changing the color. So you can either consider changing the color or you have options to add a shadow. So you have this shadow text here. I like to be careful with this, you know, it can look a little bit cheesy if you add too strong a shadow or a stroke. So, you can lower the opacity a lot and increase. Shadow sort of feathering a lot in these options, just to get sort of a subtle separation so you can read it, but so it doesn't look too much like a default layer style. Now, something like this could serve you very well for many different videos, even in its default state. So simply cut the title on whatever shots are happening in the background, and then cut the title off, and then you can do like several variations of this title. But if you wanted, you can also add very simple animations on this, so you know if you wanted, you can right-click apply the default transition that will be a fade-in. If you wanted, you can also go to the effects panel and do different transitions such as a crop or push. So let's, let's do a wipe for example. That will be like a wipe in and you can make these faster or slower. And that adds a little bit of flexibility to it too. And if you even wanted to try something a little bit more advanced, like the example I showed in the beginning, we can even create another new layer. So I'll grab my rectangle tool, and we can make like a little animation line. So I'm just going to make a little line here. It's like a really thin rectangle, and I'll bring that over. And then with a combination of keyframes, we can make it appear as though it's wiping on. So I'll go to the effect controls panel, and I'll add a keyframe on the position at the very beginning. So I'll click the stopwatch icon and make it go all the way across the text, like it's scanning on, and you see those are keyframe 1 and 2. So if I play that, 
that's what happens. You can even do something like right-clicking the keyframe, going to temporal interpolation and easing in and easing out of the keyframes. So that sort of gives it a little bit more velocity or a change in velocity. And then you can add something like a crop effect onto the original layer and go to the very beginning again and make it crop in from whatever side, so in this case the right. I'll increase the percentage all the way to like 100, add the keyframe at the beginning. And this is a little bit tedious or done by hand, but if you just use the arrow keys, I'm gonna use the right arrow key on my keyboard. You can arrow over until you see that line up here. Then you can highlight the right percentage amount, and then you can use the down arrow key to lower it. So you could just go like a few arrows to the right, highlight that few arrows down and repeat this process until the end. If you hold shift and down, that'll make you go instead of 1% at a time, 10% at a time. So that's a little shortcut for you, and we can just balance a few keyframes at a time, and it'll blend these in so a little tedious maybe, but if you get the hang of it quicker, and boom, we have the animation now. If you play that back, it should look pretty smooth if you did it, if you didn't skip around too much, even with that change in velocity. And if you wanted to do the same thing for animating it out, the simple trick that you could do is just copy both of these layers, command C, command V, or, or you can just hold option and paste it. If you're, if you're wondering why it pasted over the original layer, that just mean you just have to untoggle the track targeting to tell Premiere which layer to paste on. And then I can simply highlight both these right click and nest them together. And then right nested sequence, go to speed and duration and, and press reverse speed. And that'll basically flip it in reverse the other way. So if I want, I can just crop over just to this part I want. And that'll be like the end of the transition. So if I play, there's the simple music video title, and you can play around with the duration and the text and the color and all that, but even without that line animation, that was just something a little bit extra advanced for you. If you wanted even without that line or any animations, just a simple cut in and out, keeping it clean and simple like this should serve you well a lot of times. And it's very useful to be able to construct a simple and clean title. And not everything always has to have like crazy 3D animations and fonts and things you see. Many professional music videos don't even have the animation or anything just they just cut in with a very simple full screen title, white simple clean font, and cut out of that and go into the video works. Especially well if you know you have a high quality video in the background. So that's enough about that if you've enjoyed this video and you learn something, you can check out hundreds of more on the playlist on my channel and subscribe to stay tuned for all my new videos. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.